Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. We've just finished off at the kickoff uh, live on Twitch, so go check that out with Lawrence McCola and Rory. I was sat next to Rory through all the emotions. I, of course, you know, as a QPR fan, I was kind of, I mean, to be honest, as a football fan, I was hoping that Leicester City would do it, just because I think, look, with the Super League being what it's been, I think it would have been nice to, you know, see any of those teams that were supposed to be in the Super League to not make it into the Champions League, just to make the point that, you know, a competitive league is, is worth it and you've got to get there on merit, do you know what I mean? You shouldn't be just buying your way into things. But, uh, of course, we did the stream, it was amazing, Rory was up and down and uh, got away with it at the end. I think my thoughts are, one well, of the big question is that was on the show for a lot of it was Brendan Rodgers, did he, is he a bottler? Is that what he does? And uh, we were speaking about it a lot. Rory thinks he's an okay manager, but not a great manager. And I think what's gutting here is that they weren't able to get over the line today because Chelsea didn't do their part, didn't play their part. Now, I think there's a lot of things that need to be remembered along the way here. Is First of all, Aston Villa are a very, very good side. And Aston Villa are a team that's got Jack Grealish back in the side and that makes them different. And also, you know, the, the goal scorer and the penalty winner, uh, Traore, you know, he, He's a really good player, you know, they are littered with John McGinn. The whole back four have been fantastic for Aston Villa, so that was always going to be a really tough game for them, of course, at Villa Park as well. So it is a tough game for Chelsea, and you know what I'm like, guys, with these things. I kind of try and give a pinch of salt to, to most of the different teams, but when it comes to Brendan Rodgers and them not getting over the line, I think if you're... If you look at that game in, in isolation, they've made some huge mistakes there in terms of getting themselves over the line. Like Madison coming off, I, I mean, I, I don't know if he came off because he was injured or it, in the last few games it's been uh, Perez and, and him kind of switching out and Pereira coming in on that right hand side. But they were in a position and if they were kind of able to hold it together, keep the ball, uh, they, they would have got themselves over the line. But again, the same thing goes for, for Spurs, doesn't it? You know, Spurs are a good team. Spurs shouldn't be in the position they're in. So is Brendan Rodgers a, a bottler? I just I just don't think you can look at that one game or the two years that he's been, you know, in the top four and, you know, if the season's 37 games or 34 games, not 37 games, but 33 games, that's still like the bulk of the season. So to call him a bottle job the week after he's, he's, uh, he's won the FA Cup, uh, you know, as underdogs, and I think you saw the sort of the lack of depth that Leicester City have. Of course, their, their first 11 is good, but after that there isn't that same amount of depth and and sadly they've not been able to make it over the line but i think it was just a kind of those three games was a bit of a microcosm for the whole season for chelsea to, you know to, to stumble over the line like they have for leicester to fall out like they have for liverpool to somehow get themselves back into it you haven't been able to kind of predict anything this season which is a good thing overall do you know what i mean you know even crystal palace putting up such a fight against liverpool i think we thought it was going to be four nil five nil that game so let's go in in order Leicester City first of all I think you've still got to look at it and I'm sure Leicester fans let me know in the comments below you've got to be delighted with the fact that you've won the, a, a trophy this season and you move on and and you look, go, look, go again and hope that next season you're able to retain the bulk of that squad I think that's always going to be the scary thing each summer for, for Leicester City is that you know who are you going to lose and therefore have you got the next guy ready Leicester's recruitment has been so good that you would expect that they would be okay with that um, but you know I think Fafana will obviously stay but the likes of Madison I think oh, his form has probably been so poor that you'd be able to keep a hold of him I think the bulk of that squad you're going to be able to keep hold of the, the truth you know the real question is how good is that squad you know and how good are those players individually do you know what I mean like can they continue to play at this level one thing I wasn't able to say on the kickoff but the perception of Leicester City is it's changed because of what Brendan Rodgers has done to that team and that squad um, and so you know those are the expectations that we will be looking for next season we will expect them to be going for it again when it comes to the Champions League on to Chelsea I think that yeah they've stumbled over the line and the problem is of course scoring goals they can't seem to be able to do that I think going into that Champions League game and having just even if it is just scraping over the line is kind of enough because you'll go into that Man City game and it's going to be super different you're going to be playing counter-attacking football Ooh, we're wobbling. it's going to be counter-attacking football but yeah, Tuchel got a little bit lucky there, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, but credit was where it's due. Overall, he's had a very good season. And again, you know, if they were, if they did come out of it, and they did, it's all about expectations, you know. And I think they've met their expectations this season. Sorry if it's so windy, by the way. Uh, last one, Liverpool. Got to speak about Liverpool because they did turn it around. I think in the end, the sort of clock mentality that he turned to in the last five or six games. Um, was what got them over the line to be honest you know playing that Philipson 
uh, Reese Williams. They went with let's let's put as many players in the right positions as possible. They've done that and then looked for those guys to be able to step up, and they've totally totally done that. So massive congratulations to Liverpool. Who I think the bottom line for them is they just want to get across the line in both sense, both in being in the Champions League, but also um, just getting the season over with so they can kind of take stock and go again next season. Right then, guys, let me know what you think down below. Uh, Spurs, of course, finished in uh, the Europa Conference League spots and West Ham, shout out to them. What season for West Ham, absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to them. Um, so much more coming on the channel, so keep it locked. Subscribe, hit the like button. I'll see you soon.